I'm going to tell you a story from my first book, Born with a Bang, The Universe Tells Our Cosmic Story. It's the story about the Big Bang up through the formation of the solar system, including the birth of our Earth. There's nothing like learning the story of our own planet Earth to really gain a sense of its preciousness. This story is for levels from elementary and above. As the American Association for the Advancement of Science said, my books are for ages 8 to 80 and beyond. They're actually being used for 6 and 7 year olds too. So I'm going to model the story for the elementary level. Um, if you were going to do it for the secondary level, you would explain to them that this is a story for younger children, but they'll be able to gain a, a framework of the story of the universe. And then everything they learn will be able to be placed inside that larger framework. So deep time storytelling is an invitation into what I'm calling a deep time place or a deep time state of mind. It's a state of mind where we let go of the everyday. We forget about our worries. We forget about what has to happen today or tomorrow or what happened yesterday. And instead we go into a deep time way of being. It's a movement from doing to being. And we become completely absorbed. So it's a state of absorption. And it's also a state of communion, as Maria Montessori talked about, when she said that storytelling evokes a sense of communion between the storyteller and the listeners. So the storyteller is not so much a star as the person who helps to evoke this sense of communion, not only with the people in the room, but also with our larger identity which is the universe. So to invite people into this state of mind, props are very helpful. First of all, a candle can be extremely effective. Just think about how our ancestors for hundreds of thousands of years sat around campfires and told stories. The flame, the presence of the flame itself, helps us to relax and takes us into another way of being. I also like to use objects. They can be very important. Like for example, for this first story, I like to use this skull. The skull itself is an invitation beyond the day-to-day, -day, right? Because it, it's a story about life and death. Skulls help us to think about that. And so with this particular skull, which I've been taking around and showing to children now for well over 10 years, I show it to them and I ask them what kind of an animal this was. And of course they come to deer. And then I say, now listen, listen very carefully. Boy, that's very hard, isn't it? And then I might even go around and knock on the head of a student and you hear the same sound. <laughs> and so then I might ask, well, what makes this skull so hard? And then I say, um, it's the stuff that's in milk. Maybe your mother or father might tell you to drink up a lot of milk because it has this stuff in it and that's gonna make your bones really strong and hard. Of course, they get to calcium. And then I say, well, where did the milk get the calcium? And then they say, well, from the cow. And I say, where did the cow get the calcium? From the ground. Well, where did the ground get the calcium? And then I say, well, you know what? You can't make calcium on Earth. It's not hot enough. You have to make calcium in a really, really hot place. And then eventually one student will say, in a star, I say that's right, in a star. And then another student will almost inevitably say, 
how did the calcium get from a star to Earth? And then I say, I am so glad you asked that question because that's exactly the story I'd like to tell you today. Costumes can also be extremely helpful in enticing people into a deep time place or a deep time state of mind. This is a robe that has stars all over it. It's plugged in. The stars light up. It was made for me by a Russian designer, actually, who saw me doing some storytelling and said I absolutely had to have a robe. Another thing that's really helpful is sound. And often what I tell my audiences is, you know, I'm gonna be telling this story in the voice of the universe. And in order for me to get into the voice of the universe, I need some help from some sound, from a vibration, because the whole universe actually is a vibration. There's a story my grandmother used to tell me when I was little. She said, you know what, Jennifer? When you look at the floor or you look at a table and it looks like it's still, you might think it's not moving. But you know what? If you could make yourself so, so tiny and slip down into the table, you know what you would find? You would find vibrating atoms everywhere. The whole universe is moving. The whole universe is a vibration. The whole universe is alive. That's what my grandmother told me. So can you see what I'm doing? This is like a slow invitation. You're pulling people into this deep time state of mind. So then, as far as sound, I like to use this thunder tube. And then I say, when I finish this sound, I'm gonna start the story. So are you ready to go on a long, long journey, way, way, way back in time? Okay, here we go. And I'll be speaking in the voice of the universe. Earthlings, you may not know me. I am the universe, and it's time for us to get to know each other. After all, I'm 14 billion years old now, and how old do you think you are? Five, 10, 20, 50, 100? No, you are 14 billion years old too. You are part of me. You've always been part of me from the very beginning. That's why I'm gonna tell you a story about me, which is a story about you too. Now, when you were born in your human form, you started out as a tiny, tiny speck buried in the dark inside your mother but you couldn't stay small. You grew and grew, and a very special day, your birthday, you were born into the light. Well, I too, the universe, had a very special day when I was born, but there was no light for me to be born into. I too started out as a tiny, tiny speck smaller than a piece of dust under your bed. 
But even though I was so tiny, I was filled with wild and dazzling dreams and brilliant colors, bright yellow, molten red, and piercing blue. There were creatures in my dreams too, like insects alighting on flowers, reptiles basking on hot rocks in the sun, and birds swooping down on their prey. And I saw you too, gazing at stars. Could all these things happen? I wonder. Could I roar as a lion? Could I purr as a kitten? Could I know feelings like love and sadness and wonder. Could all these things happen? I decided to take the very first step and I blew up to a cabbage-sized universe. I was only this big. Everything that would ever be was squished inside me when I was only this big. I was a baby universe. Then I really went for it. I blew up to the size of a galaxy. And I kept on growing. I had to find the right speed for a universe to grow, you know. If I grew just a little bit too slowly, my own gravity would have overpowered me and crushed me into nothingness. Or if I grew just a little bit too quickly, I would have blown apart and disappeared into nothingness. But everything was just right. Now, that's not to say that things were peaceful, mind you. Oh, no. There was chaos everywhere, glowing bolts of energy everywhere. And then the bolts of energy shrank into tiny, tiny, tiny things. They were tiny particles, the very first stuff. These tiny particles were rampaging around in the energy. I kept on growing and I got a little cooler. And that's when some of those particles came together and they formed something amazing. They formed the very first element, the very first atoms. The very first protons and electrons came together to form hydrogen. Hydrogen. Yes, number one on the periodic table. I do go in order, you know. Well, I kept on growing. And now I was filled with hydrogen clouds everywhere. And then a force began to go to work, a force called gravity. Everything that's stuff has gravity. So all the little particles had a gravitational pull and they began to pull together, pull together, pull together, get tighter, denser, tighter, denser, tighter, and then flared into the very first Stars, yes, stars were lighting up for the very first time, the very first time, yes. Once upon a time there were no stars and then there were stars. Well, the stars too, had a gravitational pull, and they liked to gather together in galaxies or star cities. In one 
very special galaxy for you called the Milky Way. And in one arm of that Milky Way, there was a colossal star, a mother star that was very special for you. And she took that hydrogen and she made bunches and she baked it and she baked it and she baked it and she baked it and she baked it. And she turned it into lots of new elements like carbon that would one day make your brain, like oxygen that you would breathe, <sighs> and like calcium that would make your bones strong and hard. But for your sun and your whole solar system to be born, your mother star had to die. She blew herself apart in a massive supernova, blasting her stardust off into space. Now all the little bits of calcium, all the little bits of carbon, little bits of oxygen and all the other elements were floating and floating through space. And then that force went to work again, gravity, and it pulled together all those little bits of things that came together came together, came together, came together, and began to spin slowly in the form of a disc. And the center of the disc flared into your sun, and all the planets formed in the outer parts of the disc. Well, that third planet from the sun, rambunctious young planet, I say, your Earth, covered with volcanoes, spewing out gases that went up and formed the atmosphere, spewing out moisture that went up and formed clouds. And then Earth began to cool, and it started to rain. The great rain for a million years it rained and rained and rained and covered your earth with oceans and underneath the ocean there were rips in the ocean floor that's where little hydrogen bubbles were coming up remember hydrogen my very first element there it was again right there in the ocean floor would this be a good place for life to begin to twitch and multiply? Well, that story will have to wait for another day, my dear Earthlings. Until then, I send you my very best from the cosmos. It's true. I am you and you are me.